Record. Record. All right. So here's the way this is going to work. We're going to do an asymmetric example, something we're all familiar with, of sending and receiving email, but we're going to do it in a signed or encrypted way. So let's introduce the players. What do I have in my right hand? A piece of paper that says public key. That's right. That's going to represent your public key. Actually, it's done more than one piece of paper. Oh, what do I have in my left hand? I know what I Is it the same? Private A. It's private A. Again. Oh, a green private A. Private A. Those are the two players. Next. Private B. Private B. Public, public B. So there's a public and uh, public and private key pair for each. Would you agree or disagree? Agree. All right. So I'm going to need two volunteers from the audience. Thank you. And you're going to enroll in my system before you can get your public key. Because isn't that what you have to do? You have to enroll in the system. So you get a public and private. Verify identity. Right. You get a public and private key pair. Who can you give your private key to? Nobody. Sure. Nobody. You can give it to nobody. All right. Who can you give your public key to? Yeah. All right, here you go. Everybody. Actually, can I see the uh, private key for a second? No, no. Don't, don't, don't. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Trick question. Don't do it. <laughs> oh. All right, you guys got it. Got Let's it. introduce the next set of players. You got public of? B. Private? B. B. You enroll in my system, you get a public key pair. These things are mathematically related, but you cannot derive one from the other. All right, so someone needs to send an email, someone needs to receive the email. Who wants to send and who wants to receive? It doesn't matter. The green sends it matter. Green's going to play the sender. <laughs> All right, you are going to send a message. So if you're going to send a message to a receiver, you're going to need something first. What's he going to need? Her public key. The public key of the recipient. So a key exchange has to happen. <coughs> I'm a certificate of priority. I'll be transferring the keys. Thank you very much. Use the, use the mail server. That's right. This all happens transparently. It's hands off on the user's perspective. So the key goes from the receiver to the sender. Mm -hmm. Everybody agree so far? All right. So now you're going to encrypt this message. Here's your message. You can, you can encrypt the message with the public key of the recipient. Do you agree or disagree? Agree. Agree. All right, so now the message goes back to the sender. This would be the public of B. And you're going to get this, and this message is going to come into your inbox, and you're going to say, what the heck is that? What the heck is that? This is your public key. It's mathematically related to your private key, but cannot be derived from one another. What is the only thing that you have in your possession that you can use to decrypt this message? My private key. So the private key of the sender or the receiver? Receiver. Private key of the receiver <laughs> decrypts the message. Everybody agree or disagree? Agree. Okay, and that's exactly what would happen. He can st he keep that, that public key. All right. In fact, he makes a copy of it, doesn't he? And when he well, she distributed it, so yeah. it's actually his copy. Yeah. So, you know, I don't need to give it back. <laughs> You can't change players in the middle of the game. <laughs> All right, so now you want to reply to this message. What's well, one thing that she's going to need prior? Your pipe. She needs your private key. She needs the, pri the public, public key of the recipient. Same rules as before. Yeah. So a key exchange has to happen. There's, so there's a public key that ch changes hands. <coughs> And she's now going to encrypt the message with the public key of the recipient. So the message is going to come across, and you're going to find a new message in your inbox. That it's the public key of the recipient. You're going to say, hey, what the heck is that? What the heck is that? That is your public key. It's mathematically related to your private key, but cannot be derived from it. What's the one thing that you have in your possession that you can use to decrypt this message? Private key. You have the private key of the recipient, which decrypts the message. Same rules apply, right? Still the recipients. Go ahead and hold your keys up. Make sure everybody agrees with who has what key. And what you don't see here is that you would have a collection of public keys, but still only one private key. See this? Safe. So just for the just for the, the record, these two keys are on this side. <coughs> And these two keys are on this side. Agree? Who has which key? 
great. All right, so that's encrypting. Use the recipient's information to encrypt. Now we want to go ahead and prove that you are the sender of the message so that you cannot deny doing it. We're going to authenticate this message. So we still have our message. Message. But we are going to sign it with the uh, senders. We're going to sign it by sender A. So it looks like you have the private key of A over here. So we're going to do the same thing again. We want to encrypt the message. So is this the uh, recipient's public key? It is. Okay. So we're going to take our message, we're going to encrypt it with the public key. But now we're also going to sign it with the private key of who? The sender or the receiver? The sender that changed from last time. When we talk about encrypting and decrypting, we talk about the receiver's information. But now our terminology is going to change, which are also keywords for us. We're going, we're going to uh, change the terminology from encrypting and decrypting with the receiver to signing and verifying with the sender. You said he signs it with his private key. Yes. Because yes. he's the only person that has that. We want to make sure that uh, when he signs it, which basically adds a fingerprint to the message, that that's, what, that's the piece of it that's going to authenticate him. So it's still encrypted with the public key of the recipient, the message is, but now it's also signed by the private key. Because remember, the private key can't leave his possession, but we can sign it. So when you receive this message, you are going to see your own public key. Agree? Mm -hmm. And so what are you going to use to decrypt the message? My private. private key. The private key. So that would be the reds. But it's also been signed by the private key of the sender. So what's one thing you happen to have in your possession that you can use to verify this? His public key. The public key of the sender or the receiver? The sender. The sender. So it's all of the sender's information for signing and verifying, and it's all of the receiver's information for encrypting and decrypting. Do you agree or disagree? Agree. agree. All right, that's asymmetric in a nut and bolt, in the nuts and bolts fashion. That's it. Okay. You gotta follow the key, and we can do that in the physical world, and it makes a lot of sense. Sorry. You try to do that. It, what happens, and why this is confusing, is because if you start throwing around the terms in the logical world, it's real hard to follow the movement of the keys. But if we do actually move the keys in the physical world, it makes sense when we refer to it. You have to know that. I can tell you uh, from teaching cryptography for, for, for a while, um, there's, a, there's a lot of mistakes that are made with the whole sending and the receiving, the signing, the verifying, the encrypting, and the decrypting. You know, who's doing what? And so draw it out. Don't do the math in your head. Draw it out. Draw party A, party B. Do your public key exchange first, and then you know, send that public key back to them so they can use their private key to decrypt it. Follow that, and it's a lot easier. So, so now we start getting some of the questions away because the, before we did that, most of the questions were related to the signing, the verifying, the encrypting, the decrypting, the sender, and the receiver, and it gets real confusing real quick. What were those keywords verifies? Your keywords would be signing and verifying of the sender and then encrypting and decrypting with the receivers. Those are your keywords. I'll be happy to say it as many times as you like. It's the signing and verifying. You sign with the private key of the sender, you verify with the public key of the sender. Verify with the public key of the sender. Write it down. Then encrypting and decrypting has to do with the receiver. The receiver's public key encrypts. And you have to do that, that key exchange first, and that's, what, that's where most people miss that, that first public key exchange, and then it gets hard to go, well, who, who does what? But you have to do a public key exchange first. You, you actually have to have the public key of the person you want to send the message to. You have to have your receiver's information. The receiver has to give you the tools necessary to perform your job. And that frequently becomes the hard part. Right. 
especially when you got old keys or you had to get a new key and they're still using the old keys and now they can't view any of the old encrypted information because there's a new thing. Yeah, it gets a lot of operational stuff goes wrong here. Okay, so receiver and public key encrypts. Correct, and then the receiver's private key decrypts. Basically, you have encryption, confidentiality, and, and non repudiation. Uh, if you want to go IAC triad, with the encrypting and decryption only does the confidentiality, and then the signing and verifying adds in authenticity and non repudiation and integrity. This, so, if you, if you notice how I grouped them together on day one, I, I put integrity, authenticity, and non repudiation together for this exact reason. Because signing and verifying deals with authenticity and reputation and integrity, while confidentiality, that's only done with the encryption and decryption process of the receiver's keys. But you don't have a hash or anything that's been developed. Is there a hash that, uh, that, that on a digital keys? On a digital signature for authenticity and non-repudiation, there's a hash. Oh, okay, so there's no change. Okay. Yeah. Right. Is the process of transferring that public key from sender to receiver uh, that's done by a key exchange protocol. And, and that was and that's the part where you send the public key encrypted with your private key, they get it, put their private key on. Uh, your terminology is off. You can't encrypt with your private key. Are you talking you know, about exchanging? Are you talking about how to get somebody else's public key? Is that the question? That can, ha that can ha since it's public and anybody can get a copy of it, it doesn't matter if anybody gets a hold of that, so there's no reason, no reason to encrypt it. So you can post, that can be posted in a directory. DOD has a directory where I can go in and find, find somebody else who has a DOD certificate. I can find their public key. I can also send it, I can send it to Leo, I can email it to him. Sure, yeah, you can just get it anyway. You're probably thinking of a session, a session key where you use the, the public and private key to set up a session to lock each other into the session. What was the video that we watched yesterday? What was that demonstration? The, the video that we watched yesterday, the blue key was a symmetric key that we that I had to keep private. And so they used the, or was it the red and the green? Keys. Was it the, that was the process of getting the private key to you? So no, it's the process of getting a symmetric key because you don't give your private key to anybody. So you have to get issued that private key. Yeah, well, you go down to a registration office for that. That's done in privacy. Okay. That's not done. You know, I don't issue the certificates. Uh, well, although you can, it's not really a good idea. But you can. Uh, there's a, something called some features of certificate authority, at least on Microsoft's front end. You actually can um, set the keys to if you go put in a request for a public and private key pair. Uh, I can set them to auto approve, which is an, I don't recommend that as a, an idea, but it is a feature. But I don't want that to be confused with um, uh, you know the. The issuing of keys and registering the system is different than key exchanges during the encryption decryption process or the signing and verifying process. That's mutually so, exclusive. So, the, the the demo yesterday was a uh, was um, was not asymmetric to share a symmetric key. Yeah. It was. You could really read into it a lot of ways, and. The way that I want you to read into it is the red and the green key were asymmetric keys you, that were exchanged and set up to protect, the, to keep confidential the secret key that went across. So what, what was missing in that video prior to that was the exchange of the public key first. They, they didn't show that. All they showed is you lock the box and I send it over and then you can't unlock it. But if you were to do that, so they, they basically did symmetric and symmetric, a way of doing it, symmetric and symmetric. But you can do it symmetric as the what you want to protect. I want to give you my, uh, my symmetric key, but I can't do that or else it's going to get disclosed. So we can use asymmetric to secure the infrastructure and then I can move that symmetrically encrypted data across. Okay. But there would have to, the video doesn't show a public key transfer in order to lock. That's lock how you box. would. That, that's how you would transfer a symmetric key is through asymmetric means. Right. If I if you're in California and I'm in Maryland, you know, I want to give you my my symmetric key, but I don't want anybody else because remember, it's got to stay private. Symmetric keys have to stay private. It's the only thing really to their event, the you know, to their strength is that it does. It is kept private. So as I exchange that over the internet, I want to do it in a way where nobody else is going to see it. So I use asymmetric to secure the infrastructure, and then I move uh, a symmetric <coughs> key across. And that's the hybrid model. 
or digital envelope. And then when you encrypt an email, that is in fact typically what we're doing is we're using, we're using the, the asymmetric keys to encrypt a, a secret key, which is exchanged with the person who's receiving the email. Right. So they, they pur purposely kept it uh, very, very basic for the kids to illustrate just the concept of how we can transfer something securely in a public space. But um, maybe there'll be a version two of the video where they'll actually uh, tie in the roles and they actually show you the key exchanges in a physical world for asymmetric. Or maybe we'll do it one day. Maybe I'll do it. In the what class was it? Where did you find that? Uh, what was the. It's called key exchanges. If you just search YouTube for the video key exchanges, it's a really great video. Plus, if kids involved, that's always exciting. You know, the kids are like the happiest kids in the world. After that, you know, you, you, the kids ran home and went to their parents. And were like, I participated today. Yeah, I understood it. Yeah, <laughs> they, they feel happy and excited. So. I think we should give a round of applause to our participants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Stand up, take a bow. Take a bow. It's the Starbucks, folks. It's going here. All right, so let's review this. Asymmetrics. Do you agree that it uses different keys at both ends, a public and a private key? It's used heavily in, well, PKI environments, so that's a easy one. Generally used for encrypting symmetric keys. Yep. Okay. Without encrypting that data, it could easily compromise, so nothing there. All right, so symmetric systems. Hey, these three guys had an idea to fish and cast out their rod to receive bro fish. Why don't you have an AES list there? I was curious. Oh, so that's industry there's standard no exhaustive today. list. Sometime. I know, but AES is industry standard. Yes. That's why I was going to ask would the you, Would you feel better if I added it? Yeah, I would. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. What's the answer to 13 again? I forget. Wait, you're 25? You, you've got, <laughs> hey, these three guys. But everyone uses AES for most stuff nowadays. I mean, AD, three guys, and an idea. You don't to, have to make it exhaustive. To fish, idea to cast out the rod to fish. <coughs> and receive blowfish. Make it pretty colors for you. <laughs> two, two fish and cast are out of order. What is it? Two fish uh, needs to go up above cast. Idea. Two fish, fish. Two fish and cast. There you go. It's my model, folks. Back off. <laughs> <laughs> any way I want. Do it any way I want, buddy. Right, and then you can go through the whole list. Hey, these three guys had an idea to fish and cast out the red rod to be, or you could say uh, to to uh, cast out the rod um, to fish for a blowfish while drinking RC cola. You can get creative with it, but I'll let you guys have the the artistic uh, freedom to to do what you want with it. So, Des, this is a symmetric algorithm. Most used both in com uh, commercial and government. Environments is first defined by FIPS 46-9, and it's been used by federal agencies since the 70s, and it was done in the late 80s, early 90s. I think 92 was officially like no more. Um, it's more of a history component. So it uses a 64-bit uh, key. That means the key length. Well, there's. They, they throw around the numbers uh, a little bit differently sometimes. You have the key size and the bit encryption, like the block size. And, and I mean, just be careful of that. I understand that there is a difference between the two. So one actually normally re uh, references the key. So the key is uh, basically your key to lock and unlock the data or encrypt and decrypt while the bit size is what is the increment that you are gathering off of the hard drive and performing the encrypting function on. That's your block size. So you may see 64-bit block with a 64-bit key. Well, one is the key and one is the size, uh, the increment that we're encrypting. So pay, pay close attention to that. There's several modes here. You got Cypher block chaining and electronic code book. Um, ECP, uh, I'm sorry, ECB, electronic code book. That's just 
just good enough to encrypt, uh, for example, uh, pin numbers on ATM machines. Write it down. And cipher blockchaining, that is the most popular encrypting method if you want to, for example, encrypt a terabyte of data. So uh, large amounts of data for cipher blockchaining, electronic code book, very, very small pin numbers on ATM machines. <coughs> So cyber blockchain was most popular for large amounts of data? So. Yeah, so if you want to encrypt a large amount of data, you're going to use something like Cypher blockchain or CBC mode, versus ECB was uh, there's a couple different vulnerabilities with it. It's linear, it doesn't chain things, so you can see patterns, which gives you frequency analysis attack. But it's basically pin numbers at ATM machines, very, very small amounts of data. So there's not versus, enough data in a pin. Yeah, it's like, what, what's the size of a pin number? Right. K, Ks. Dare I say, a four sixteen k? Yeah, but it's linear. The way the electronic code book works, and we'll look we'll look at these modes of operation here in a minute. Well, you know what? Let's just do it now, because I, I actually like the reference of um, uh, Wikipedia for this, because they do a really really good. It was search for Wikipedia modes of operation, and it goes over most of the modes, especially of DES, and you know, it defines initialization vector. But what I like about this are these guys right here. Okay, and you can see an electronic code book. Okay, that basically you have plain text, and it just goes through, and the key is passed along. So it basically says, let's take 64K, let's encrypt it, let's 64K, let's encrypt it, let's take 64K, let's encrypt it, and then let's add it all up at the end. The problem that is, is that if the plain text of A is repeated, we'll always get the same cipher text. So you can see the patterns. Does that make sense? No? Makes sense. That makes sense. Well, it makes sense if you can see the pattern. Right, A is right. going to, if, if we do like a, um, uh, a substitution cipher here, just for simplicity purposes, and we have a key of three, A now becomes C. Would you agree or disagree? Mm -hmm. okay. So if we have A over here, it is also going to become C. While E would become F, G. So you, see, you see how that works? Mm -hmm. You just you encrypt that one function, pass the key along, and then you know add up all the characters at the end, and that's basically your encryption. But you will see the pattern. So every time you, the word the appears, there's going to be an equivalent ciphertext. So the word the, you can see those patterns, as opposed to as opposed to um, electronic code book, where where you can see the chain process. Here we use an initialization vector, okay, which is your starting direction of the encryption, and then it goes to your encrypting function, but the output of this round now becomes the input to the next round. And so the pattern is encapsulated or used in the next encrypting process. And, whoops, and it happens over and over and over again. So by the time you go through all of your rounds of encrypting or all your mathematical functions, you can't see the patterns. You can think of the concept of a Russian doll, right? Where you take off the head and you pull out a smaller one. You take off the head, you pull out a smaller one. You take out the head, you pull out a small, right? It's that same encapsulation process. Right? And then in the stream modes, the, why don't I just cover them while we're here? You got cipher feedback. This is a stream mode. Uh, a stream cipher of DES, and this uses initialization vector, your key, and it also uses a very, very similar process. I mean, it looks like it's um, it ch 
chaining in that sense where you have your output here, um, but you notice that there's plain text here, and that gets uh, combined with the previous saying. So it's a little bit more ambiguity here. It's kind of hard to see the, uh, you know, the the actual moving around of the data, and then cipher feedback happens yet again a little bit different. If you notice this arrow right here, right, it's slightly different. So the cipher text after combined with the plain text versus becoming part of the plain text. And then also in both of those, the key is just passed along through. That's what, this is why the key has to have the most protection possible on it. Because if this is exposed, that key there, then anybody can decrypt the information. Output feedback is another one. So we'll, we'll look at these um, here. But I just wanted to give you the idea of how the data gets moved around and why the patterns are either revealed or encapsulated. There's definitely several, about five total modes of DES. So the history of DES was uh, it was broken in 1998, or broken by brute force, uh, and it was accomplished in three days. So all of a sudden, now we had this rush to use three DES for everything, which was it doesn't make sense to use DES three times until you realize that instead of one key, three times. <laughs> Then if you use the same key three times, it doesn't, zero strength. But if you use different keys for each function, or for each, I don't want to say round, but uh, each part of the three pieces of DES, use a different key, well then you can have, then it, now, you're, now you're out of strength now. So you have triple DES. It's 56 times 3 is 168. So that's the three deaths. That's where you get the 168. But why isn't it 64? Why isn't it 64 times 3? Because the very, 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 very Right, exactly. Good call. A lot of people use triple deaths. It's very, very popular. Uh, it's still used today. Financial and banking systems. So there's, there's really two modes to do this. There's... Um, yeah, the, well, there, there's two things that, to note here. It, DES will do an encrypt, encrypt, encrypt for each round, or an encrypt, decrypt, encrypt. They often abbreviate those by EEE -E -E or EDE. -E. So in the example here, key one, I, I call these doors, right? And, and let me back up for a second. If you think about the doors of your house, you have a screen door, then you have an internal door, and then you have your, your, you know, your heavy door, and you use three different keys to go through three different doors, right? And so the encrypt versus decrypt, think about it as the direction that you walk through the door. So some do doors you walk through forward, an encrypt function, you can also walk through the door backwards if you want to as well. It's a decrypt function, but because you change the key, you're not going to go back to the original data. If I used key one here and then I encrypt, decrypt, and then encrypt, I would really just be encrypting one time because two of them would negate each other. But because I switched the key, I'm actually adding strength. Because now you've got to figure out how I did that. When I run the functions forward or when I run the functions backwards. So you have the EEE mode, encrypt, 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 or encrypt, decrypt, encrypt. And then I can do this with two keys or three keys. Everybody with me, Sam, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. Has right. one been show? Has one methodology been shown to stronger than the other? Uh, yeah, the encrypt, decrypt, encrypt functions are considered stronger with three keys. The more keys, three keys is stronger than two keys, and an encrypt, decrypt, encrypt function is stronger than an encrypt, encrypt, encrypt function. Okay. Anybody want me to say that again? So here, here we take a Word document and we encrypt it with key one, then we decrypt it with key two, but because we changed the key here, we're not going to go back to the original data, and then we encrypt it again with either key one or key three, depending on what mode. Who 
Was it a question? I'm sorry. No, nah, I was I'm just walking myself through the process, but I agree or disagree? Understand. Yeah. So next you have AES, Advanced Encryption Standard. It's a symmetric algorithm. You got 192, uh, 128, 192, 256. Adopted by the government in about 2000 of October. You, you said something about a byte equivalent when you were writing down the number. Yeah, there's actually uh, a higher bit sizes of it, but um, 